Hello folks, how's it going? So One Piece, the anime, is back on track in 2021. Obviously we didn't get an episode last week. We did get One Piece 1000, which was a historic moment. This episode was a historic moment for a plethora of reasons. Episodes like this it brings out the greatness, the best in One Piece. Obviously we ended one up at two, the last time we were in the anime. So here's the interlude. The intermission between one of act two and act three with the world building aspect of one piece which is something i fully enjoy when it comes to one piece and i remember when this came out in the manga i labeled this as one of the best chapters of 2019 by easily by leaps and bounds and when you see what's going down it all ties in for what happened the, pre the last time we had a world building episode where we found out after one of act one we found out that number one the biggest part was finding out Blackbeard's bounty. So that was the highest bounty we've seen thus far until next week. So, spoiler. And we also found out that, according to Mihawk, something went down at the Reverie that involved the Shishibukai. Now, even if you're One Piece anime only, I think you can kind of put two and two together and figure out what that was. And that was in this episode. So it all ties in. Plus, we also found out in that episode, Blackbeard mentioned the admirals Fujitora and Greenbow clashed with the commandos of the Revolutionary Army. Considering what we found in this episode, I think we can kind of guess what happened. There's a, again, this episode was made for One Piece theories. For those who want, like to make One Piece theories, these this chapter was tailor made for you, and this was the episode uh, 957. And I have to say, one of the best episodes so, so far, even though it's 20, oh, the years just begun. But man, I, I don't know if it's because of the new animation that they used, added with the fact that it's world building. But yeah, there's a lot to digest when it comes to this episode that was tied in from the, the last time we went to the world building scene of One Piece. So I just thought that was kind of cool. Speaking of the animals, it starts off with Admiral Fujitora. And we get, I guess we get a recap of what he said at Dressrosa to Do Flamingo, which started all this, which pretty much he wanted to abolish the Shibo Kai system. He also brought up a huge point about the Yonko, about the pirates. And so I guess he got what he wanted with back at the Reverie at Marijoa. Then we get one of the big main tragedies of what went down, one of the big topics that went down. So, so confusion broke out. So we go to Regal Kingdom at Fishman Island. So King Neptune and Shira Hoshi, they get escorted back to Fishman Island by Garb. But before he leaves, obviously, there's a brief moment about the differences of each country. So it brings out bloodshed. There wasn't too much bloodshed. However, as Garb points out to Shira Hoshi, something messed up went down at the Reverie involving the Alabastan Kingdom. And immediately, Shira Hoshi thinks about Bibi. Now, it's not specifically stated, but you can kind of put two and two together. I personally think Cobra's dead or something happened to him, considering what we saw with the Gorosei, the last time we saw them, they did not want Mera Joa. They didn't want anything to do with the World Noble, so they didn't like that, so something obviously went down. It could be something to do with Vivi being captured. We don't know yet. That's the first main tra tragedy of the episode, kind of teased. And obviously with Shirahoshi, and, and I do like... It's interesting because we go to them first because they have the last to travel because literally Fisherman Island is right below Merajoa. Kind of like how that starts. Then we go over to pretty much Morgan's news and he's trying to print out what went down at the Reverie. We also found out this took place days before Garb escorted Shirahoshi and Neptune back to Ryugo Kingdom. So I just want to point that out. So. This happened before with Morgan's news, and the last time we saw him, it's obviously spewing that propaganda about Luffy being the fifth young core, and obviously get the scoop. He was there to see, he pretty much stated the big mama to be defeated by Luffy, even though that wasn't true. But we know what Morgan's is about. So, Morgan's was gonna put something out, what happened at the Reverie, and for whatever reason, a member of Cypherpol infiltrated Morgan's news and they wanted to, first off, they wanted to bribe Morgans not to let this go public. Whatever it was that the world government did not want Morgans News to spew out, they wanted to sh shut up Morgans News. So they said they first put a 
bribe to put some money to it so don't spew that shit out that so he's going to spew it out then they had someone infiltrate pull a gun on him but i have to give credit to morgan's news and i think they added a lot more effects than they needed to but it just shows morgan's can take care of himself apparently so he KOs this member for cypher paul a father this dip they dip and they before then the the also before we cut away they get a call from wapple from drunk kingdom and apparently he spewed them some information that sp shut the hell out of out of morgan news so i'm guessing whatever that was it tied into what happened what we found out later on in this episode wondering what that was because first off what was the other bit of information that cypher paul did not want morgan's news to get let get out that's first thing secondly we go over all parts of the world where we see the newspapers so i thought that was very interesting and this is the first case where you can see a see a real shift in the tone of the episode where it goes from super joy jubilous because of what what the announcement but you see the certain ramifications of other things that went down in the reverie primarily when we go all over it there's one kingdom look like alabaster i don't think it was but you do see a lot of people crying so i'm wondering about where that was but then we go over to very familiar old characters we go over to we go over to the Revolutionary Army, and this is where we get the second biggest tragedy episode, apparently. So something bad's happened to Sabo because you see, first of even Cough is is freaking out. You got Bello Belly, you got Koala, obviously they're freaking out, they're shot by this. But whatever what happened happened to Zabo, it kind of paints the picture of he's dead. I don't think so, but it looks bad because Look at that face of Dragon. When's the last time you've seen Dragon that concerned about anything? But then he pretty much gets it together. And he's like, this could be bait. This could be bullshit. So we have to perceive this with caution. But Koala's crying. Whatever happened to Sabo is bad. And we, it's even backed up further. But what we go over to where we go to Makino, where so, so where she's close to bar. She's just crying. She's got, she's leaving the baby unattended. Which could be Shanks' baby, by the way. But yeah, that just shows you how bad it is. So there could be a cop. In her mind, Saba could be dead. We also got to see Dandan, Dan, which is emotional in itself. They just learned about Saba being alive. Now they're hearing about this, possibly with Sabo being dead. What else could it be that happened making this type of reaction? That were bad enough. Like, just to stir the plot, you have Blackbeard, Marshall D. Cheech going, Z ha 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 ha. So. Looks like we're going to get to it before the Navy get to it first. So what that means, I don't know. So there's a lot of speculation of what Blackbeard's going to do from this point forth. Is he going to go after Sabo and the Mara Mara no Me? Because we know Jesus Burgess wanted that. And we know that the last time we saw Blackbeard, Shiryu got Absalom's devil for it. So that's not good if Blackbeard's on the move. If that's what he's after, that's bad. So... It just paints a bad picture. We really know, need to know what went down at the Reverie with the... First off, there's more than just Sabo there. We had other members of the com Revolutionary Army Commanders that got up against Green Bull and Fujitora. We actually go back to, to Eversu Town because we see X Drake and he's having a conversation with Kobe. And this is one of the big, big reveals that's going to lead into possibly what could happen at the end of Wano. So... We have X Drake on the on the Denver Mushi to Kobe, and we have both we find out that both members are sword. The speci special organization within the Marines are actually acting out on their own. So there's other members as well. I'm pretty sure I have to I guarantee either Fujitora or Aokiji, they have to be members of Sword as well. I'm pretty sure Smoker is too. Default that means to she is as well. But that would make the most sense, but X Drake is learning what happens on the outside of Wano with what's going on with the Shiji Bukai system. And on the inside, X Drake is giving this information to Kobe. And you notice what, what's going on here. Like, even when X, even with Kobe on the Marine ship, he's still trying to keep hidden from the rest of the Marines. So, like I said, it's a secret organization within the Marines that's acting out on their own. As soon as X Drake brings the whole stuff about how Big Mom is on Wano, and how in, 
she and Kaido used to be at the each other's throats, but now that's changed because now they've formed a line. How the hell did X Great learn about that? Because he wasn't on Onigashima to listen to this. So how the hell did that happen? Did Kaido just make that public knowledge to the people outside of Onigashima? So that's something that needs to be addressed. Or like, or maybe X Drake has close sources within. I don't know, but that's that information gets out to Kobe. He's freaking out. He's also freaking out about the fact X Drake points out that apparently members of Cipher Paul Cipher Paul came to Wano to negotiate the Orochi. We know that we saw that. We they wanted Orochi wanted Vegapunk on Wano. I don't know if that's ever going to be addressed, but I hope so. Just and X Drake just points this out: the fact that a member of Cipher Paul is infiltrated on in in Wano with a is negotiating with the pirates in the form of Kaido. Yeah, that that's bad news. That's bad enough. But then we go to what's really going now, which has people buzzing, but also people freaking out because we have a loss of the one of the three great powers within the world government. Because people are getting public knowledge of the abolishment of the Shishibukai system. People are happy about this because as much protection as it serves the world government, they also done some fucked up shit. As the narrative highlights the the purpose of the three great powers, the Shishibukai, of so what they've done, some of them, not all of them, obviously the point painting out the Shishibukai is in a bad light. So if people hate pirates already. This is just going to fuel the fire, which we know there's honorable Shishibukai. We saw we know Jinbei because of what Crocodile's done, Doflamingo's done. Blackbeard's done. Even I mean, to a certain extent, even you can throw in Moria and Boa Hancock to some extent. What they've done, they've pretty much just acted out on the road. This is going out doing whatever the fuck they wanted. Look at Dress Rose and the State Alabaster in because of Crocodile and Doflamingo. Both of them have connections with. Both of them are getting taken down by Luffy. So yeah, that that just plays the bad picture of why the Shibukai system could not be trusted, and obviously. Fujitora got gets what he wants, but it's bad. This could this is going to cause a shit film. I'm telling you right now, for two main reasons. Number one, they're pirates. They're pretty much they they don't have to listen to the world government anymore. So if they technically that duration of they can attack the world government as a unit if they choose to, because I think this is going to this is going to cause an alliance for sure. Also, because the the warlord system is no longer in effect. So this also has the admirals going after the warlords, the Shishibukai system. You have you have like Kobe saying he's going after Boa Hangar. I don't know how well that's going to work out for him. But we also remember, I want, I'm curious where Fujitora is going to go also. So because I doubt Kobe can handle Boa Hancock by himself, as strong as Kobe's gotten. No. The most surprising one to me is like Mihawk. They're going after Mihawk, right? He's pulling out his sword like he's ready for this. He's not worried about this in the slightest. Like, I'm like, who's the idiot to thought to send just average vice admirals or marines going after just father marines going after Mihawk? You you better have an admiral or two going after Hawkeye. Like, that's a mistake. So, so there's a sense of deity. You got the whole end of the Shibukai system. We even see Weevil with you know he's been caught surrounded with. And that's not a problem because he's about to clean house. So, like I said, this could easily cause an alliance, not just with the Warlords teaming up, but also because certain members of the Warlords are allies of Luffy. Primarily speaking, Hawkeye, Mihawk, and Boa Hancock. Mihawk obviously trained Zoro during the time skip. Also, he's the goal of Zoro to surpass. So, I don't, I, I can totally see him allying with the Straw Hats. So this sets the stage of what's going, ha going to happen after Wano, but it also could set the stage of what could happen during Wano, because now the reason why Boa Hancock couldn't go with Luffy anymore is because she was on Amazon Lily with, as a Shijibukai, but that's changed now because she's no, that's no longer the case. And there's women freaking out, Amazon's freaking out over this. Boa Hancock isn't concerned, and I love that. Like, she's confident. Just who do you think they are? Why do you think they hired us to be Shijibukai in the first place? Like, we're strong enough. We're strong. So, 
So I see some, we're about to see some bodies flying the Marines. Unless they send admirals going after the, the likes of Boa Hancock and Mihawk, they're going to get bodied hard. So, but going back to my point, this this is going to cause a shitstorm for them, the world government, because now you have the possibility of the likes of Boa Hancock and Mihawk allying with Luffy. And I could definitely see someone like Buggy, who I thought it was kind of cool first, like they were hyping up because he was ready to fight back against the Marines, like, oh, I'm getting caught, in, caught up in this because of Doflamingo and what Crocodile did. But he's, he, there's one point that made him look like pretty honorable, it's like he was willing to fight back, but then obviously by the end, it just picks him out to be a coward, like, oh, I need you to help me to get away from these guys. But that ties into, I, I think he's going to seek the protection of somebody because remember what Law said back at Punk Hazard, the way to survive in the new world is you either ally with a young core or you try to work and try to work under them or you try and take a young core out. I think that's what that's something that that's something that Buggy can do and because of because of the connection, I can definitely see as much as he probably won't hates Shanks, he's probably gonna have to seek the help of Shanks because he's probably the only one who can help him right now. I don't see Kaido, Blackbeard or Big Mom looking to lift a finger to help buggy but just the fact that that that's potentially what it could tease i could definitely see something like that so yeah so this episode was great it went all over the place it covers a lot and it foreshadows a lot without actually giving you too much so i love that obviously the big question mark is what happened to bb what happened to cobra and what happened to sabo i'm not too worried about the warlord yet Especially if they send no no offense to any Kobe fans, but if you think he's taking out Boa Hancock, like no, like I said, unless you send an admiral or two, yeah, it's not going to work out for you. But and the other big surprise is the fact we got Sword revealed, and we have one member of Sword on Wano, and we also have a member of Kobe making his making her way to Amazon Lily. But I'm curious what the Revolutionary Army are going to do are going to do now that something bad's happened to Sabo. Yeah, it doesn't look good, but I'm pretty sure it doesn't mean Sabo's dead, because they definitely will not off-screen that. So, And we also have other members of the commanders of the Revolutionary Armies, and we don't have no idea what happened to them either. Next episode is going to be on a next level, considering the fact, speaking of Yonko, we're going to learn a lot more about the Yonko next episode. So I can't wait for that. Let me know what you guys thought about down below i thought it was a great episode great way to start the one piece anime in 2021 that's going to do it for today guys thanks so much for watching like the review if you did hit the thumbs up i appreciate that helps out the channel subscribe to our one piece catch you guys later thanks guys bye